Are you having trouble trying to figure out how to use third party instruments when collaborating with someone else? How do you send them the session when they don't have the same plugin as you? Well, in this video, I'll show you exactly how to do that. Here we go. Here's my beat. I'm gonna play it real quick. We've got the drums here, some orchestra layers, arpeggiated uh, chords, and then here's my third party VST. Okay, so now I wanna send this to my buddy. My buddy doesn't have Serum. I'm using the demo of Serum, and he doesn't have it, so to ensure that all the sounds I get transferred over with the file. I want to make sure that I turn this MIDI data. I'll click on it. You see the MIDI notes. And I want to turn that into uh, audio. And uh, generally, when I'm working on my beat, everything's looped up like that. And you do that by pressing the L key, right? So everything's looped up. I want to go ahead and shorten it. I've got it all selected, right? And then I will click on the end here. So now it's eight bars. Keep it nice and clean. I can go ahead and highlight this, hit Control L, it'll turn all those loops into regions. And then um, I could glue these, I usually do that, I usually glue this into one big bar and then go ahead and what we call bounce. When you bounce it, you're turning it from MIDI into audio. But for the sake of this video, I'm gonna keep things simple, so I'll just back up. And we're gonna keep the loop there, shorten it. Now what you can do is when you click on the, the MIDI, I'm gonna right click on it and go to bounce in place. If you don't see bounce in place here at the top, go to bounce and join and then bounce in place. And you can also see the key right there. The key command is uh, control B. So you can also click on this thing, have it highlighted like it is, hit control and then B and then it'll bring you to the bounce regions uh, menu. Um, so I'll just right click on it, go to bounce in place, brings me to the same place. That's the name of the preset. I usually keep that just in case I need to go back and look for it. It, uh, by default, will select the new track for the destination, that's fine. Um, then mute is fine too, that way it just mutes this uh, MIDI data. And bypass effect plugins will bypass any plugins that you uh, create here. So let's pretend that you added a compressor and some reverb. You could bypass that uh, to so that way it doesn't affect the audio and you can add those later. If I do have stuff like reverb and um, compression, if it's not something that I want to keep it on in the sound, no matter what, then I usually bypass it, right? So we'll bypass it even though there's nothing there right now. Include audio tail in the file room, uh, excuse me, in the file, and then include the audio tail in region. What this does is if you're, which this one does, when you play the last note, it sustains over this this thing. So when you hit the last note, dun, 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 it kind of rings over. When you include the audio tail and file in the region, you do that, it's going to record the end of the tail also. We don't want that. It doesn't, I, I really don't need that. If I'm doing like a small little piece for an intro, then I'll keep that. So you can figure that out yourself. But I would recommend if you're sending a loop like this that just loops and repeats, uh, uncheck that. Then include volume pan information. You can see right here, I'm panning it to the right a little bit. So it's coming slightly out of the right speaker. Uh, I'll just uncheck this so that way it's coming straight. And then later on, we can go ahead and pan it. And then overload protection. I usually keep that on so that way it doesn't clip. And then I'll hit OK. It processes it, it turns it into audio. If I hit S for solo, play it. You can see it. It has, you can see that it has uh, converted it into audio. There we go. You can see the audio regions. All right, and I'll unsolo that. Now I still have the MIDI regions. It created a new track, and then it also uh, muted these, and that's fine. So that way we can keep this. And maybe my buddy wants to go in here and use uh, one of his third-party sounds and and mess with the MIDI data. He has the option to do that. And um, if not, I usually tuck these away. I'll press the little H button right here for hide. You can also use your keyboard. And we will click the hide button right here. That means it'll hide. So once you hit H again, it hides it. So it's there until you click the H. So now it's hidden. And then I can send this to them. I might also just go ahead and hit Control L just to loop those, and that's it. Then uh, we're gonna send this off. So I'll go to File, Save As, and then I have 
a folder here under the desktop. So we'll go to Quora tutorial and here's my empty folder and we're going to call this sound dope loop it up. There we go. And now I have the option to send it as a package or a folder. A package will create one file with everything in that file. So any audio files, uh, any of these things right here, audio files, EXS instruments and samples. That's the sampler that Logic has. Uh, Alchemy audio data. If you're using the Alchemy sample, um, VST or instrument from uh, Logic. Ultra beat samples. That's the drum machine. If you're using samples, it'll pack, package it on in there in this uh, session. Space Designer is the reverb. If you're using Space Designer plugin, it'll send the reverb, the impulse responses. And then if you're using a mo movie file, let's say if you're scoring something to a movie file, it'll include the movie file. And the same thing with uh, Apple Sound Library content. So if you used Apple Loops, then um, it will include it. So I can go ahead and just uncheck. Since I did use Apple Loops, I'll click on that. Um, you can do all of them or none, and then it'll kind of just it'll it'll add them in there if if you have it. But more than likely, you don't have any. So package uh, we can keep that or folder. The folder structure just breaks it down into um, the folder where you can see the audio files and then um, a couple other little things. But uh, if you're just sending it back and forth to collaborate, uh, package is a lot more easier because then if you send the folder, you've got to zip it up. So I'll go to package. That's it. Hit save. And we're good to go. So now we are in uh, our folder here. Here's the sound dope loop it up session that we just made. I double click on this or my buddy will double click on this and it'll open just like that. So thanks for checking out this video and subscribe for more videos just like this. Press that little bell to be notified immediately when I drop a new video.